Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another week, another episode of Camera and Flask. I don't know what Jem's snickering about down there. That was, that was, was a delivery. That, that was, was amazing. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thunderdome. Let's get uh, ready to roll. Yep. Oh, and I'm an amateur, and I didn't mute myself. Apologies. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Good to see you guys again. We've got... We've got these regulars in here who are just champions. They're here every single week. Shiznuts, Bart, Travis. Uh, they've had quite the long conversation. Uh, we've got Red and Oliver. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Jago. Yeah. So good to see you guys. Uh, welcome back to another show. So let's check in with these other two hosts. We've got uh, the the owner of this channel, this fine establishment, Jem Schofield, down there in, in the teal room. How you doing, Jem? I'm doing all right. I'm. Uh, I just kind of woke up this morning. and said, "You know what? I think I'll work from home today." So that's what I'm doing. I'm working from home. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> 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 and in the purple room, the yeah. beautifully soft lit Ben Barden. What's going on, Ben? Uh, same, same old, same, same old. Groundhog Day, Day again. again. Oh boy. Uh, huh? Still here. <laughs> how are we, you, how are you, you, my, my friend? friend. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, yeah, tired today. Stayed mm, up. Yeah. yeah, getting up early. Yeah. Trying to be productive, all that fun stuff. Super, it's funny. Like, I would, you would think in this kind of time, I feel like everyone's going through this. Like, oh, this is the time for me to get stuff done and do all these things. Not Zero not. interest in working. And yeah. I'm still yeah. going to the office because no one else is there. It's just me. Yeah. And I sent my employee home for the month. Um, and like, I feel almost like bummed <laughs> that yeah. I have the opportunity. I'm super grateful to be able to continue working. But yeah, that kind of just overall, just like, eh, just want to go watch Tiger King. There he is. <laughs> but spe <laughs> so. spe spe speaking of Tiger King, uh, we're getting some comments in the chat about Ben, who's kind of our resident Tiger King. And your audio is <laughs> your audio is a little. They're saying it's uh, it's it, there's an echo and it's haunting. I'm not hearing it in my cans. Um, Me either. You know, so this, is, this, this is live stream weirdness, weirdness going, going on. I'm afraid, afraid. there's a little bit of reverb in there, but mm. is there a, nothing to you know write home about. Yeah. So. Yeah, what's mm. everyone anyway, talking about? Let's Tiger move. King. Let's move on yeah. to the uh, the good stuff, and uh, yeah. let's get on to what we'll be sipping on this evening. Chat, let us know what you're working on. Would love to hear from you. Uh, we're going to start with Ben. So we're back to uh, late night stuff, right? Like, yeah, yeah, kind, kind of. of. And, and I've, I've got, got like, like, hay fever stuff, stuff going, going on. So I am on like, medicinal, medicinal tea, tea with, with whiskey, whiskey and, and, and uh, what, what else have I got? got lemon and, and all, all sorts, sorts of good stuff. stuff. Perfect, Perfect thing, thing just before you go, go to bed. So, so, so tea and what? Tea, whiskey, whiskey and lemon. lemon. Mm. But, but it's, it's like, like a, a herbal, herbal tea. tea. Nice. Being healthy. healthy. There's a, a similar similar drink, uh, but use ginger. Uh, replace the tea with ginger and still have the lemon and the whiskey. And I think you add honey and it's called a penicillin. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> I, 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 we, we were talking, talking about, about this last week, week and, and I, I do, do that, that, but I've run out of ginger. ginger. Got it. So, so there, there we go. go. Mm. Nice. Good. Ben, like or it. Jem. Ben, Jem. Uh, so I, I was into the uh, into the Glenlivet Founders Reserve, and I was like, I'm really not into the Tomatin, uh, you know, double cask. 12 year, which has sort of been a favorite of mine for quite a long time. Very reasonable price for um, a decent scotch. And I just was really, last week I was turned off by it. And then a couple of days ago I was working, I was reviewing videos and stuff. And I said, you know, I'll have a dram. And it just hit the spot and I'm back in. So look at that. Your taste buds change every few days. So we'll do a little, um, a little. That, that, uh, that, 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 that's that's the, the, the you know, know what. what. I know, here. <laughs> oh, God. There it is. There, like, oh, that was a good that, cork. Yeah, yeah, no, this is, this nice. is like the Godfather. Yeah, okay, nice. go. Some, a little, it's a little Foley. So we've got a little Foley going for the show. And uh, and my fine friend in the Midwest, what are you drinking today? Um, I would like to see, Caleb. Right. So um, 
I am going to be working on. We're not quite Caleb level on this one. Wow. But we're getting there. We're on our way. I'm getting low on okay. stock. So we're yeah, back yeah. to Weller. Uh, it's a kind of an odd one. It's a uh, wheated bourbon aged 12 years. Whatever that means. Kentucky straight. So okay. we're going to be doing that neat. And uh, we'll get this party started. I'm seeing in the chat people are saying Ben's yeah. got I'm a little bit of stuff going on. I'm, I'm going to dive, dive out and come, come back, back in and see if that, 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 that's all right. Because this, this is perfect. Odd. All right. I'll, I'll be, be back. back. Sounds good. All right. So okay, beautiful. while, while Ben turn. is getting back, I'll kind of go through what we're talking about this week. Um, we're talking about production tips. We've done two of these episodes. This is episode three of this series. Ben, how you doing? You want to do a quick check? One, two. One, two, cheers. one, two. Any better, any better. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Let's cheers Let's it up. It'll be 40 seconds before we hear back on that anyway. Clank. Cheers. Yeah. Mm. Mm. cheers. I'll be the white guy who doesn't know fancy words. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, Bart says, right. uh, can we get a Ghostbusters I am Vigo, uh, Ghostbusters 2? So we're going to see. You have to speak out loud so we can see if we've still got the echo. All right. Just read I, the I am, words. I am Vigo, the scourge of Carpathia. Any good? Not really. Fixed. I haven't seen that film. It says fixed. Yeah, cool. Fixed. fixed. Okay, oh, good. good. There you go. Brilliant. Great. Uh, confession time. Out. I've not seen any of the Ghostbusters movies. Conversation. Really? Really? But I've watched first Breaking Ghost- Bad three times, so I'll, first, I first Ghostbusters movie. Uh, they they drive around when they're in their you know their hearse uh, down a, a block in New York, and if I freeze the frame at a certain point, they are driving down my block that I grew up on on 88th Street, and you can actually see the building number on there. And then I saw them filming the original Ghostbusters film because a lot of it was done on Central Park West in New York. And uh, there's a part in the movie towards the end where the the whole street is like torn up and everything. And I was on a regular city bus and they were they were like filming the thing while buses were going by. It wasn't even like they closed off the whole street. You could see the (laughs) the whole, you know, the set and everything like that. So crazy. Very nice. Good story. Crazy. Um, Right. So this week, gentlemen, and chat, yes. mm, we're gonna be yes. we're gonna be hitting you guys here in a little bit with some stuff. Um, yeah. We're talking about production tips. This is episode three. Um, we're gonna go in a circle and each give one tip for the following categories. Number mm. one, camera. Camera tips mm. can be anything camera related. Two, we're moving on to lighting, and mm-hmm. three, post production. So with mm. that, why don't mm. we do Ben? gem myself and we'll just keep looping through and then we're going to be hanging out uh with you guys in the chat would love to hear your tips and uh questions and just comments thoughts everybody's so chatty today you see that everybody's super chatty which i love it's a good time in there and and yeah and 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 some there was pages of it before we even started it was great yeah yeah so all right camera first was this correct all right so I saw something this week. So this is from something I've seen and not actually used, but it's a fantastic idea. So I'm going to claim it. Uh, I've been searching for vehicles this week and there was a, a production company in the US that had bought like an old ambulance or something to make into their kind of camera car. And one of the things they'd done in their storage bins was that they'd put uh, quick release plates in their storage bins so that they could transport the camera fully rigged in the vehicle with it just coming in, snapping it into place, the thing isn't going anywhere. Genius. How many times have you got into a car strapped in your full, fully rigged camera with a safety belt? Mm. Yes? Mm. Jem's nodding. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yep. Your yeah, arm right. gets all jacked up, your monitor is sideways and half unscrewed by the end of it. Yeah. Pressure Put points on, on floor, lenses. Passenger, pass, passenger side, everything's getting bent out of shape. Takes five minutes to get everything back to where it needs to be, even with your arm. You know, it's all messed up. Yep. So so this has got me thinking is that I'm not going to have, yes, but an old ambulance like Ghostbusters. But this was even bigger and taller. But it got me thinking that even for, for any vehicle, there must be an easy way of rigging something up, even if it's just with a board with a, mm. with a, with a plate on it. 
and that's a, an easy way to keep that steady to keep pressure points off the camera. So I'm trying uh, that can for I, sure. Can I t can I take that a step further now that you're talking yes. about it? And, and I, I want to think it out. So please do. You take you take a, maybe a piece of plywood or something like that, mm -hmm. and instead of putting a baby pin on it, you put a VCT base plate on it. Exactly. If that's what you're yeah. using, and then that's you just was... pop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you just that was me. Yeah, okay. exactly. Just putting a board in to put on the back seat. That's good. So that would work yeah. work pretty well. <laughs> What's um, good? The drink. Oh, the drink is so good. I just what got are you a nice... What are you drinking again? This Weller uh, whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bourbon. I haven't had it in a okay. while. I've been drinking cheap stuff. Good. Um, the American equivalent of uh, what Ben normally yeah, rocked yeah. in his grandfather's. Yeah. But I just got you know when you like have just the right amount. And it, it sits on your tongue for a little bit, and then you yeah. just you effortlessly just kind of like swallow it without like big gulp, and it just goes down and just oh. Sorry, you know what I would do? Re, re, revisit revisit the Four Roses at some point because I didn't like it a lot when I first tried it, and then I got mm. a, a Four Roses, and I've had a couple of those recently, and I really like it. So, and it's not expensive, so maybe try a Four Roses next yeah. time you're at the store if you see it. That's good. Um, um, and to, to go off of Ben's brilliant find, you could take it even a step further. And if you drive yeah. a lot to your gigs, put yeah. that piece of plywood, buy a cheap car floor carpet, yeah, and uh, attach the quick release receiver, like drill a hole through the carpet into the tri the the plywood. Yeah. So it's a floor mat with a with a small quick release receiver. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yep. Or you can it in your camera bag. I don't know. But I like it. Well, um, yeah. So that's a good one. Mm. Uh, Mr. Dram, what you got? Um, mine is a little different, and it's really just sort of the whole process of what I've been going through with um, with this whole setup right here. And you have a couple of shots of this sort of camera setup that I've now had going for about a day. It's literally a day I've had this set up. And so what I have is um, on the bottom there is a little 10 inch monitor that I got for $99 from Amazon. Uh, when it shipped to me, it actually said, believe it or not, Andy Cine. It doesn't say Andy Cine on the monitor, but the box <laughs> says Andy Cine. Those guys are in everything. Yeah, I know small they are. Rig. Oh, uh, just question for hand. you, Jim. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm pulling. I'm going to pull up your photos for everybody. Yes, Which sir. photo do you want to start on? Just go through the numbers, like the first one. In that oh, you haven't pulled it up yet? Uh, no. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, the one that I see right there below you, which is, it's just basically the two teleprompter images. Okay, so, okay, so now I'm talking it out. Now I see it. Now yep, I got it up. Can see it. Okay, good. Um, so basically you have this 10-inch screen, $99. It weighs about three ounces. It's ridiculous how inexpensive and also how lightweight these things are. And it's sitting inside a teleprompter, which is designed for iPads, made by a company called Caddy Buddy. And it's about 165 bucks for the entire teleprompter system. And that means that you're getting the base there that the iPad, or in my case, the monitor is going to. You get the proper, um, you know, beam splitter, uh, mirror that you are reflecting into, you get some stuff that is going around it so you can cover your camera. And on the other side of that is the X-T3. So what I'm doing is I'm basically now able to, when I'm having conversations with people or I'm doing consulting, I have my eye lines are correct because I basically just put like right now, Ben is there and I'm seeing Ben and I have the eye lines with Ben. So it's totally changing how I'm interacting with people when I'm doing stuff like this. I'm putting my chat on my laptop now and I'm gonna try to sort that out. That's the disadvantage of having a smaller teleprompter is I don't really have enough room to have the chat and also the, you know, the zoom call or the, you know, the live stream or whatever else it's going to be. Um, but for me, I'm just basically running laptop to HDMI and then I'm just spanning my desktop. I'm not mirroring it. And then I just drag stuff over and I can have proper eye lines. So I'm really excited about this. If you want to kind of see how it feels from a viewer standpoint, 
just go to the first episode that I did today of a new series I'm doing called Conversations. And I did my first one with Matt Porwall, who's a documentary cinematographer who I've known for a long time and also shot Cartel Land. And that was really the first time that I used it in earnest. And it made a huge difference, I think. I really felt like I was connecting with the person I was having the conversation with. And I think it will seem a lot better for the audience in terms of what they're seeing. So there you go. That's uh, that's my camera tip. I'll, I'm going to do a breakdown at some point and I'll probably, you know, at some point create a whole sort of training thing on how I'm doing all of this. Uh, but that's it. That's what I got. Uh, are you still mute? are you muted at the moment by any chance, Caleb? Yep. Good save. <laughs> I was just yep. saying that would that would make a great uh, YouTube video. I'd watch the heck out of that that whole <laughs> setup there to be able to deliver so many uses. Seeing yourself, uh, if you yep. needed to watch your framing while you're doing things without like yep. doing one of these numbers where you're like, let me uh, check in the monitor. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's a teleprompter, so if I want to just push some some teleprompter software to this now. I have a nice uh, solution. Of course, if you have a newer iPad and you have a newer version of, of Mac OS, you can basically, it's called Sidecar, I believe, and you can essentially make your iPad another monitor. So that's another way to do it. But I don't have a new iPad. I have an iPad 2, which, mm. uh, wait, wait, by the way, weighs about 10 times more than this actual little 10-inch <laughs> screen from... Uh, from the, the fine folks at Andy Cinney. There you go. Pretty Andy good. Cinney, man. Yeah. Um, so mine's going to be a, a quick one and a simple one. Uh, but in, in the age of high resolution sensors and high resolution video, yeah. um, I've been finding of late, I've been shooting five to 15% wider shots and then cropping in in post. Even if I like have a locked frame, I'll shoot a little wider. Okay. Um, just because it gives you a lot of flexibility. And most of the sensors, at least with the cameras, you know, I mess around with, almost all of them these days are 6K sensors capturing 4K. So uh, you have not necessarily, you're capturing 4K, but you have that larger detail to begin with because you're downscaling that 4K uh, or 6K into a 4K frame. Um, so especially with B-roll, right. I've been turning on those cheesy safe areas on monitors or if more mm -hmm. and more I'm using small HD just because it's amazing and how you can customize the frame guides on there. Um, and uh, that's been awesome because you every once in a while you're like, dadgummit, I wish I had this slightly wider. And if you just shoot a touch wider, you can pretty much guarantee you can punch in 10, 15 percent and not notice any difference. Yeah, if sure. you're shooting on like Panasonic, Sony, Fuji, um, et cetera, just don't do it with Canon because you're going to run into some problems there potentially <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, since yeah. it's already soft. So anyway, <laughs> simple one. Just just back it off five, 10 millimeter. See what happens. Nice. Good OK, tip. very good. All right. Camera down. All right. So round one complete. Now we're going to move on to uh, lighting. Mm hmm. <laughs> You got one queued right. up for us, Ben? Yeah. So, uh, a simple one, and well, I'm sure we've talked about these before, but using these things, which are just um, paper lampshades. China balls. These, China balls, exactly. So, you, th these things are like five, six dollars, and you can pick them up from IKEA or uh, anywhere, really. Uh, but they're a really useful thing to have a few of them around. And I've used those for years to make a space light. So if you put want to put something into a whole room. Uh, but also recently, I've, and I don't know why, because I've always before got a little clamp that I've kind of, a little janky little thing that I've put together that I can put the thing on the stand and hang it off. But the other thing that I've realized with all these small fixtures that we're now using, so things like the bowling and, and the, uh, the little aperture light that we all use is, when the thief is already up there, if I just tilt my camera up a little bit, you can just see the top of that, yeah? yeah? So you can actually just throw the thing in there, the bowling light just fits in through the hole at the bottom, and there's no stand, and it's I'm pointing it straight up, so it's then just chucking all that light 
into the diffusion and for no effort mm. and no floor space being taken up no, and stands to hide. I think it's a pretty useful little thing. That bigger one there will fit the, the aperture A7 into it as well. So just through the hole at the bottom. So if you've got those things in a room, and so it's let me let me ask you a question so that I can clarify that. Um, so if you if you take a, a standard paper lantern, china ball, whatever you want to call it, um, yes. and, and you use the you use uh, basically the wire piece. What's that called mm. in there again? I forgot the name. Yeah, of it, there's a name yeah. for it, and uh, and I just had a brain fart. But you take that wired part, and if you took the bottom of it and you built it out a little bit. Couldn't you create like a little platform that we could take a, an aperture F7 and just sort of lay it yeah. in there or or uh, Velcro or something? Is that what you're saying you're doing or could you? Because you no. could probably just have it sit it sort of yeah. inside of it a little or something. Yeah. Well, that, that's all this is doing now. So the F7 won't fit in that one, but it'll fit in that bigger one that I just held up. So all I'm doing yeah. is you've got the... At the bottom of the uh, the metal frame that supports it and actually pushes the yeah, yeah. pushes the thing out into a sphere. At the bottom, yeah. there's a ring and a hole in it. So all you do is you just poke up the fixture inside, lay it flat onto it, and it just holds it. It's amazing. Uh, and small, yeah, small and brown fox. Bowling. <laughs> what? <laughs> These guys yeah, are small brown. Just, Yes, yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, and these yeah, yeah. I do, I do have a, and this, this, this honestly is for a blister on the palm of my hand. Don't say it's those types day. of things, Ben. You're just that's, you're digging that's a what hole. It is. Small I, brown fox is making you dig a and, hole. Okay, and and that is exactly how I got the blister. Was digging a hole. <laughs> it's a gardening injury. Stop it. Okay. Here's All the right. other trick. Here's the other trick for the paper lantern is that. There's obviously going to be a hole at the top of the china ball. And what you do is you just take a, a piece of diffusion or tracing paper or whatever it's going to be. Heavy diffusion is better. And you just cut a little circle on there and you just tape it onto the top so you're not losing that light. So it's bouncing mm -hmm. all around. Look at Caleb. I, <laughs> I finally <laughs> saw the comment. I was looking for it. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Out of no, nowhere. No, no. Welcome, yeah, small no. brown fox. I don't oh, think I've seen him before. No, I've seen <laughs> small brown fox. Unbelievable. Okay. Probably That's brought good. in. It's probably an old standby coming in yeah. incognito with you know a different name. Yeah, judging or by that. Or grad. And am I really so? Am I really surprised that Small Brown Fox's comment is bookmarked uh, between David and Shiznuts? I mean, come on. I mean, ridiculous. So what is going on down here? My uh, goodness. Oh. And uh, your your setup there, Ben. The beauty with the bowling light is it has mm. that incredible arm that I would wish everyone would just knock off because yes. it's the best. It's amazing. And so, it so that thing, you can just loop the light in and you already have like a quarter 20, like little little baby yoke boom arm. Right. That you can just latch onto, right? Oh, love that it, thing. Yeah. What, what, what is the arm? Wait, what arm. is it? I don't know what this bowling thing is. Do you have it, in, do you have it to bring into frame or you can't? Uh, no, but I can uh, I can bring one up here in a second for you. Don't have what you have you have one, Jem. You bought one in the Black Friday. Oh, the bowling. Sales. Oh, you mean that bowling? I know the one with with the cool arm. You mean because that's yeah. a, and by the <laughs> by the way, also also sold by Andy Cinney. What the f is going on with yep. those? People? Everyone sells that light now. Everyone, yeah, every and, Chinese and the company. R1. Well, isn't the Pilot Fly very similar to that? It's not the same light, but it's very similar. You've seen that, right? You've seen the pilot fly. It just doesn't have that cool arm. Uh, wait, does do other people have the cool arm as the bowling? Or well, not? it's just re it's just rebranded a billion times. Okay, mm. but with that cool arm, with the with with that little metal piece. Yeah, there's some out? with, mm -hmm. some without. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not finding any photos with the arm extended, which is weird. The, uh, there we go. The, the jokes are just going. It's just, I'm, it's basically, it's like Benny Hill down here and the, in the <laughs> chat. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. All right. Yeah. While I bring this up, uh, Jem, what you got? Yes. Lighting tip. Um, it's kind of BS. I'm taking, I'm taking the uh, easy road today, but uh, it, it's, it's really, it's the idea of side or semi side keying especially when you're in small spaces. I mean, it will help with reflections as well. Um, but if you bring up that one image of the 
you know, the reflector, uh, it's not even a reflector, it's just a diffusion panel, that one. Um, and basically, it's just pushing a large, a large or even a smaller source through something, but having it more sidey than coming from from camera side. And what that allows you to do, and you know, I can kind of, you can sort of see that illustrated in my frame for today, is that the background so I did is not it. Sorry, yeah, the back, you're about the one no, with no, the halo. Fine. Yeah, that one, and then you can also maybe pull pull up the other one of it because that's sort of showing you the side view where I have two lights. I have uh, the mix panel 150 coming in there, and then also a Felix P360, which is what's lighting up that clock behind me over my right shoulder. Um, right there's a the Felix in a tiny softbox that's you're, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? well, no, 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 that's actually the other. So that's basically the fill light. It's it's doubling okay. up as a kick. It's basically kicking and it's filling because it's bouncing off of the uh, the sound blanket, which is white, which is also a good tip for lighting, which is, you know, if you want to take a space and you want to bring down the sort of ambience and the reverb in the space, then, of course, sound blankets will help but most sound blankets are dark and these ones, which you have in the video on your channel and that uh, you can source are black on one side. So that's neg fill. And then they're white on the other side, which is of course can become a bounce uh, neutral source. So I found that in combination, it really helps, but it's just, you know, if I had my key coming from here, then that whole background behind me with the bookcase would be lit up even more because this space is absolutely tiny. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm taking the easy route, but it's still now that you brought up the frames and I can see the sound blankets, maybe that's the tip that I should be giving is, uh, if you're trying to deaden a space, make sure you get sound blankets that have uh, one side that's white because it's neutral and it'll help you bounce light. And if it's black on the other side, then you're getting neg fill as well. So there you go. Bingo. There Excellent. you go. That's what I got for you. So nice. Okay. Let me uh, switch over here. Hide this. Are we, getting, are we getting yelled at for not having show notes? We're, we're lame that way. Uh, that's true. We're just hanging out. Um, we're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. Yeah. Relax, everybody. Oh, the bowling. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a bowling. Is it the bowling P1, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. there's a billion of them now, but that's the original I feel yeah, bad for the company. Get called vlogger. It sometimes gets called as yeah, well. Yeah, vlogger. Uh, I apologize, Ben. Actually, I'll cover Jim up because this is Ben's light, technically, his tip. Mm. Uh, what? This is the light, and you can see that arm. It'll show mm -hmm. up here in a second. Um, it's that amazing. Arm the best. rotates. Where it attaches to the light, it rotates 360. And then where that elbow is, um, it also rotates 100 and actually more than 270. 180 degrees. 270. Yeah, 270. And then it's got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, six plus mounting points when it comes to quarter 20. Yeah, I, I totally had it. I totally had a brain so fart. Good. I, here it is. This is the. Oh, there it. you go. You got it right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just had a brain fart. I thought he was talking about a larger light. Um, so it's just so adjustable. And it's mm -hmm. great because you wouldn't want to put like it on a the, tank that light. It's yeah, amazing. It amazing. And, and if you want to put it on a table or something, you can just basically, you know, orient it. It's almost like a phone yep. and you can just sort of, you know, just kind of have it resting. Uh, I think for your money, it's one of the best little lights you can buy. It's nowhere near as um, flexible as the MC from Aperture because of the whole, you know, app uh, and everything else that you can yeah. do with that little MC. True. But the output is definitely greater. Yeah. And, the the uh, bicolor range is rough. The color on that is rough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very rough. It's no aperture F7, but mm. again, size, price. Yeah, it's great. I, I yeah. think it's a, it's a good it's a good buy to have in your kit for sure. And you can power absolutely. it off of USB C. Um, can't you? It's USB C. I believe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Which, you which can. I, yeah. Which I and I I think that by the way, talking about everybody having a certain thing, stop putting other things into products just put USB C in them because yep. you can it's power them you can do, it, like everything that comes out from here on out should just have USB C and you know um I'm glad that the Rode video mic NTG has it I think that everything like that should have it as well it's a big deal yeah agreed yep so uh my lighting tip I'm kind of going with 
at least for these first two, pretty simple stuff. Um, my lighting tip is going to be um, just moving your head around to find the optimal key spot. So a lot of the time uh, we're like moving the light over, seeing what it looks like, move the light over, get in frame, see what it looks like, especially if you're a content creator, or YouTuber, or whatever. But one thing I found is instead of monkeying around with that and constantly checking the monitor, just sit like I am right here and start moving your head to find the optimal angle. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward and it's a quick and easy way to, um, cause sometimes, you know, the light is five degrees from being perfect and, uh, just doing that, you'll right. be able to see where shadows are, um, and kind of figure out, okay, I need to move it over and up a little bit. Um, super helpful if you're, uh, small to no crew, which uh, mm. this channel is all about. So you should subscribe yep, if you're new yep. to that. Um, I, I do want to point out also, because you just triggered a thought, Caleb, which is that one of the tips that I give people when they're in production is when you are hanging out at the camera and you're trying to figure out what problem is that you're trying to solve, what you, you see a problem, right? And it's a lighting problem. And you stand there at the camera and you're trying to figure out what the problem is. It's the totally wrong way to approach that get away from the camera and walk directly over to where the lighting problem is. And when you are in the position of where the problem is coming from, you can then scan the space and you can see exactly where the problem is coming from. And so get away from your camera when you're trying to identify and fix lighting problems and it will resolve itself in a tenth of the time. Um, you know, we just, we just brain fart. We just stand there at the camera and, and almost become frozen. Like, I, I don't, what, where's, where's that problem coming from? John, Johnny, move the flag a little. No, it's not that flag. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so <clears throat> you just walk 10 feet over and you stand there and you look at, you, you're basically positioning yourself and looking towards the camera at that point, And you'll see exactly where the lighting problem is coming from. Like the, you have a floppy cutter and it just needs to be rotated another five degrees because it's spilling on the background. Or there's a mirror that you didn't see from where you were at the camera. And there's obviously some light that's bouncing off of the mirror. So you can either take the mirror away or you can take a piece of gaff tape and you can cheat it out a little bit. Um, if you do that over and over again, you'll actually get to the point where you're standing behind the camera and you'll probably know where the problem's coming from, but it really helps identify lighting problems. If yeah. you do that. Yep. I'm going to have to take that off of my list of future lighting tips that I had. Hey, Gem. we can bring it. No, we can do that. <laughs> one we tip, got... one tip each. So, uh, moving on to post. What do we got, Ben? Hey, you triggered oh, just my kidding. tip. Hang on, Jim. That Jim, was not on my great. list. Go ahead, Jim. No, no. I was going to say <laughs> you triggered the tip. It wasn't on my list for today. Because you had such no a good one's tip triggering. about stop <laughs> no it. one's doing stop that. It. Let's go back to small brown fox. Stop <laughs> All right, just, Ben. Just, 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 just the tip. <laughs> Amazing. All right, well, mine is a, a using just the setup that I use, which we haven't mentioned on here before, but I think it's such a good tip for when you're on the road and you're doing backups in the evening. Uh, for post which is always a moment of fear the next day when you're on day two of the shoot and you're starting to format cards and camera again and is it there is it there uh, so I have this which isn't come on focus 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 it's not having it is it no all right well I'm going to put it next to my face and you can see what it is this is the an Amazon uh, USB hub which is uh, seven ports on it and it's powered with a three amp uh, DC in so meaning you can put little two and a half inch drives as many of them as you like and they're all going to run properly uh, but if you use this in conjunction with uh, the DaVinci Resolve clone tool this takes a whole world of stress out of your life because you can put in as many of your drives that you want to back up to whether that's two three four whatever and you can put card readers in here so you can put all your cards for the day shoot you can drag them, so you, you drag your source and your destination, but it's all just drag and drop on the folder structure in that uh, clone tool in Resolve, and it's even in the free version, and then you just hit go, and you go to sleep. And in the morning, there's a log in each folder telling you that everything has perfectly copied over and checksummed. 
So like a simple one, but just like rather than having to wake yourself up every hour and change drives over, which is something that I used to do. And, that, and someone in the chat favorite. might be fur furiously typing right now, but but Ben, you can get a USB C 10 gigabit a second, blah blah blah. But what they don't know is all of those USB C hub things, at least this first generation, they're all going to be dead in six months to a year if you use them a lot. Whereas, I mean, look at talk to anyone who's used a MacBook dongle, they just mm -hmm. die after they a while. do. Oh, no, no, the, they die all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas what Ben is talking about, especially the ones that are powered, like USB Type B connectors to your computer, those will your great grandchildren will find those in your basement working, you know, <laughs> generations from now. They just don't die. It's good stuff. Well, and and also it's when I'm buying drives for jobs, which is something that again we've talked about, and that goes uh, gets billed to the client, and it's a not an optional thing that there's at least two drives, one that stays with me, one that goes to them. But those drives generally are the cheap USB three drives, which generally still mm. have these. So Yep. That's good, it. Good, good, good. All right. A huge time saver and stress saver. Sir Gem. That's interesting that you're bringing up that whole USB C thing because um, I have been finding that it's I'm having a particularly bad run of these devices just dying on me constantly at this point. So there's one or two that have stood the test of time, but most of them just zonk at a certain point in time. So they are uh, not very reliable. Mm. Um, so what's our category here? We're post production. So this is a little tricky. This is more verbal. There's no visual for this one. Um, you know, I, I'm tasked at times with doing education that is not to camera, but it's basically post related. So I have now repurchased ScreenFlow. There's Camtasia, ScreenFlow, other screen recording options that are out there. You can, if you're Mac based, you can use QuickTime Player, you can do a screen recording, but it doesn't let you choose frame rate, it doesn't let you choose parts of your screen. Um, I don't even know if I really need the whole post part of it where you bring it in, but it is nice sometimes because when you're teaching people how to do something that's from your screen or your desktop, sometimes you want to see the cursor. You can increase the size of the cursor. You can magnify parts of your screen. And so I would say it might make sense for people to look into things like ScreenFlow and Camtasia for those types of solutions because they are designed specifically for that task. It's for screen-based recording, screen-based recording post-production. You can, of course, take that movie and bring it into Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and just start working with it. But they have very specific tools inside of their editing platform. It's kind of like an NLE that will allow you to do things because of the way they're recording your actions that you're doing on your desktop and with your cursor that you don't necessarily get out of a standard NLE. So I would say that that would be a tip to look into that for educational content and for things that you're doing for presentations. Um, the one thing that I will say is that a gotcha seems to be sometimes there are latency problems with the audio. So you'll have to go in and you'll basically have to shift your audio by a few frames in order to make sure everything syncs up. And I think that, at least on the Mac side, has to do with the fact that if you want to record system audio, most of these solutions have to install this other little audio recording utility and you have to give it permission to do that and it just doesn't sync up all of the time so i would take a look at ScreenFlow, flow Cam uh, camtasia as uh as options for me from all the tests i've been doing in the last few weeks i think that screen flow at least for the mac is probably the better solution so there you go that's what i got nice uh grumpy penguin welcome welcome this chat uh, this live stream is a better place because of you being here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um I'm going to try to go quickly so we can hang out with you guys in the chat here. But uh, my trick, it applies in my instance here to Final Cut, but it should be applicable to other NLEs. And Ben, you can back me up on this if it's a possibility in Resolve. But I, no matter how many camera angles there are, even if it's just one, 
always create a multicam um, when there's mm. kind of a main A roll. Uh, and the reason for that is in Final Cut, you can create multicams with multiple cameras, multiple audio inputs, which is great if you have multiple cameras, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's a wonderful thing to do, even if you have a single camera. As an example, let's say you're shooting an interview, you're editing it uh, in the middle of an edit or toward the end, you're like, you know what? I'd like to change the grade on every clip without affecting B-roll. Or you know what? I want to add a second angle, but I don't want to go through and like copy and paste the attributes of every clip to whatever cut. With a multicam in Final Cut, you can just double click the multicam, you know, create 18 different versions of the same clip and then switch them at any point in the edit with a single tap of your numbers on your keyboard. Right. Uh, or copy and paste different color profiles. Or you know what? I'm not sure which one of these grades I want to go with. Well, you can create four versions of the same video and tweak them all without having to touch your entire edit. Um, so I do that all the time. Even if it's, again, even if it's, if it's a audio recording and, you know, my main camera, I can go back in and, and make changes to the entire A-roll with a couple clicks, Genius. which I think is, and, I do that all the time. And I would say that Final Cut Pro's uh, implementation of multicam is, is really nice. Brilliant. But it's not something I've ever thought about doing because normally what I'll do is I'll duplicate my, my primary storyline if I'm using Final Cut, and then I'll just create different versions and then put those different layers. grades or those layers, and then you're blading and you're doing all this kind of stuff. So that is, um, I would say, if you're a Final Cut Pro 10 user, some people will say X, um, that is a humongous tip. I think that, um, well, that's one I'm, I'm taking with me. Because from a, there you go. from a speed of workflow standpoint, it just makes it much faster. I'm excited about that one. Thank well, you. As, as an example, like you're, you're talking about post-production screen grabs or screen captures. Uh, when I do my guides, I'll often have a camera like this. I'll be like, all right, now let's take a look. And we look over at the screen. I'll create a multicam with the desktop capture, my main camera. I'll then create another multicam layer where I'll create, this is getting a little more technical, I'll I'll yep. take the camera of myself, the main shot mm -hmm. and my desktop, and I'll create a uh, compound clip and then I'll layer it. So I've got me in the lower right hand corner. Um, 50 50. You can just create infinite layers and versions of all of your sources yep. and at any time add or remove those without affecting your edit. And then when you're editing, you can simply, you know, uh, on the keyboard, just one, two, three, four, five, six, however many angles you have as you're going through. And again, the main point is if you're in the middle of an edit, you don't have to now go back and make adjustments to all of your previous work. It just yep. life goes on. But it's so fast for cutting, too, because you can do a very quick rough cut as you're playing down the timeline by using those keyboard shortcuts, which yeah. is, of course, the huge advantage of multicam is that you're just saying, okay, I want to go to three, I'm going to go back to one, I'm going to go to five, and yeah. that's a huge, huge time saver. Beautiful. And I'll also have my assistant editor start editing the A-roll before the rest of the assets are created, Yeah. and then later we can make tweaks. So Was that a second tip I, there? Hmm, interesting. Oh, snap. Well, oh, no, it's all related. Oh, oh. Okay, sure. So if, I, so if I just have a voiceover and no visuals yet <laughs> or, or whatever, you know, yeah. that can happen. So... That's it for me. And with that, we're down to 15, 16, oh, 15 now minutes. Um, so what's going on? Chat. Bart said uh, earlier, I missed it, but uh, I saw here it is uh, when we were talking about like adjusting the angle and moving your head around to find good lighting. I'm just going to develop yeah. a motorized slider and pan tilt mount uh, and mount, a, mount to a light stand so you can remotely adjust his light until it's perfect. I like it. It's good. Um, good. The other, the other one about that I liked when we were talking about the um, the backing up stuff. Mm. He was saying that he gets his preferred folder structure because, of course, when you when you're then backing this stuff up over two or three days and each night you're doing it, you need to have the same folder structure mm. just to try and keep things easy. And he's saying that he he creates that, zips it, and then every time he's doing a new a new disc, to then just open that out and copy it in. I think that's a brilliant idea. 
Very nice. Because I end up going through and recreating that and then copying it over to the next mm -hmm. one. But it's each job I redo it again. But it's always the same structure. C200, day yeah. day one, day two, day right. three. Then the cameras and then the reels for each camera. That's great. That's a huge time saver. Yeah. If you're on a Mac, uh, Post Taste is a killer app yep. um, for creating. You can create like an infinite amount of like custom folder structures with files in them. So you can actually create like a premiere project with certain settings. And then with uh, then you can like create these fields. So I open Post Taste. I type in the name of the next YouTube video, hit enter, and it creates all the folders and files. It'll customize titles and super powerful and free. I think you've, you've oh, used that, right, Jim? I've not heard of that. Calling, who are you calling an A-roll? <laughs> <laughs> That's a David <laughs> comment. David's obviously into drink number three over here. Sorry. Um, I, I, I think I've used Post Haste once or twice. It, I, I'm familiar with the product. It's not something that's in my regular workflow. But, you know, I try a lot of stuff. What's going on here? Zip trick. I guess I'm going to say show. I didn't see anything bad in there. I don't click show and hide. I, I never click show immediately when it's shiz nuts or 360 grad. Where is 360 grad, by the yeah, way? Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, come on. What's happening over here? You'll have to um, add uh, Mr. Fox to that. Uh, yes. Small brown fox is coming. <laughs> yeah, to that brown, club. Small brown fox is coming up strong from the he's rear. He's on the watch list. <laughs> oh, he's definitely he's, on the he's watch He's only list. left one comment, she, I think. We don't know. Up yeah, two. yeah. Um, and, and then getting political. Now we've got a Fauci and uh, Trump uh, comment in here. We're not getting oh, into that. Boy. We don't. We don't do. We don't do politics. We don't do religion, and we don't do science on this channel. You can have any viewpoint you want, and we love you for it. But that is not part of Cameron Flask, and it is not part of the C forty seven. But subscribe anyway, as long as you. Uh, you know, I'm never going to answer those questions. What is happening down here in the chat? Oh. Uh, Okay, here we go. Uh, people are asking about NAB announcements, and uh, yes. gentlemen, just just to have yes. a little bit of a, a little, yeah. you know, a little thing mm -hmm. because it's it's coming up in the chat today. We would have all been arriving at this moment. We would have probably been at Total Wine picking out our bottles of uh, whiskey with each other, and we would have been <laughs> we would have been really. Uh, probably drinking pretty heavily in about two hours from now and then setting up all day tomorrow. So that's all. I just want to say that. I'm done with that. Sorry. Thanks for that, Jim. I know. Yeah. I just said right. that. I, yesterday, or t two, two days ago, when I was supposed to be flying out <laughs> on Tuesday, all day long, my phone's just pinging going, you're supposed to board plane. Oh, man. But board your, your flight to LA and what? Uh, just yeah. have fun without a blister. Nobody's on any airplanes right now. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's on an airplane right now. Yeah, no, Here but it was just because everything had been, you know, what it's like when your calendar picks up all your flight tickets, you know, when you order stuff and it can, it can then hack into your calendar somehow. I don't know what goes on. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, so it's just everything or and every morning it's picking up NAB, NAB. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, there's going to be a bunch of events. I, I have seen this trend that's starting to happen where we're seeing manufacturers doing uh, Zoom seems to be the favorite, even though there are the security issues. But it mm. definitely seems like the industry is starting to try to figure this all out. There was sort of a, a month and a half to two month reset. Atomos is doing something next week at some point. Um, we've got Canon coming up on April 20th. I think we're going to hear about new products. And, um, you know, I think we're going to be wearing masks outside. That's what I think is going to happen. But I think we're going to start to open up some things. And so it's going to be a slow transition back into whatever the new normal is going to be. But mm. we're for sure going to hear about these products that are going to come out. And um, there's no way it's not going to it's not going to happen. Um, Caleb, have you heard any rumblings? having to do with that as we are sort of um, in the leading up to NAB what it was going to be week. Yeah, not too much, you know, a couple of things here and there, but, uh, I would say, uh, get your, your pre-order fingers ready slash your sell my cannon gear before it drops another three to $800. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, yeah. that's happening this year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yep. 
But yeah. Oh sure. I'll yeah. I guys. mean, offload offload your C three hundred Mark IIs right now, unless they're working. Well, nobody's working right now. But if they're if they're working cameras that you can make a living with at this point in time, fine. But I would say that um, it would probably be a good time to start to think about that. It's just hard to sell gear right now with everything that's mm. going on. Yes, uh, mm. Bart says that DJI has something coming up on the twenty seventh. I just yeah. saw the tease on that. I think that came out yesterday. Um, let's not, you know, kind of, kind of poo poo the whole ATEM Mini Pro thing. I think that that device is going to sell like gangbusters. And could they have come out with that product at a better time? And even though it's an awful time, it's an amazing product. Um, there, could it's they put? A, could yeah. they have put a power switch on the goddamn thing? Uh, so I could turn it on or off. I'm just saying that's one thing that I wish they would have done with the upgrade. But other than that, it looks amazing. So there you go. Uh, Do you I think ended up upgrading my pre-order, by the way, Jim, to the you pro. You did? Oh, good. Yeah, I was yeah. like, ah, I'm not going to like. To it's totally worth it. Just, about a couple hundred bucks. Just, just to record, to not have to have an Atomos recorder and the whole thing. Just to record and also to have a program outstream that shows you all four of your, your inputs, right? So that yeah. you can actually see yeah. what you're switching to. Those two things alone to me. Um, and then and then it's got streaming hardware inside of it. So if you have uh, like a killer connection to the internet, you could potentially actually use that with, um, you know, with uh, OBS, which would be yeah. pretty great. Yeah, mm. so I think it's you pretty You could cool. almost skip this whole situation that we're in right now. Hmm. Almost. with a good internet connection for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm still thinking that i want to start figuring out how we can go back to memo live because it's such a powerful solution it's yeah. just it's been a long problem. time since you tried that yeah well they've they've just as a sponsor upgraded the, all three of us to the newest version for another year so i think we'll do some tests over the next uh little while if you guys open up memo live again on your systems caleb and ben it will uh auto update so that you will have another year on those so we could well, maybe we'll do some tests midweek or something like that to see yeah. if we can get cool. that all to work okay cool Very do nice. you think the black magic are going to bring that, that as you were saying timing wise that product is is just perfect for everyone's crazy situation at the moment. Yeah. Do you think they're going to do? Do you think they just rush that out, going like we we've got to jump on this now, get all the because people are going to go mad for this, and then no. do another announcement around? No, you think that's it? There's going to be nothing else. I I don't think we're going to see another product like that from them until next year. Honestly, I don't mean I don't, I don't mean they... like that. I mean I mean you think of the normal NAB. Monday morning Black magic hype. Yeah, oh, exactly. Like um, there's a huge blanket covering half the show floor on the outside. Right. With a yeah, big yeah, yeah, yeah. Black magic yeah. item. Mm. I sure hope so, but I feel like they they've done so much recently. Yep. That the black the pocket six k. I mean, I would love to see a new pro or pocket full frame. I think we'll see it this year. Pocket thirty five. That sounds pretty nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we'll I think we'll see it this year. I think that, you know, clearly they have an ergonomics issue to deal with on the four and six K cameras, which they've <laughs> you know, they've sort of solved with the Ursa Mini Pro four point six K for its form factor. Great form factor for what it is. Heavy, but great. Um, UI is killer right now. The the way that you interact with all of those cameras, 4K, 6K, or so many Pro, uh, you know, Pro uh, G2, great. But I think that we need uh, some sort of screen that articulates. It doesn't necessarily need to be selfie, but I think we need to get something like that. I think that a, a body redesign on the quote unquote pocket camera, and then of course. I would be shocked if within the next six to nine months we don't see a full frame sensor solution from Blackmagic. So I, I think we've got some stuff going on there. And then we've got Zcam doing their thing. And then of course is Red with this, you know, new camera that's gonna come out. Mm. And that'll be yeah. interesting to see how that all plays uh, out in the market. Question, I, question for you guys yeah. and people in the chat. Z Cam. Mm. Is it dead? Like mm. I keep seeing their stuff and I'm like, wow, don't say that to, frame don't say that to Bart. <laughs> he bought one. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> yep. but I just, I'm just curious and Bart, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but, um, I feel like for every Z cam, there's something from mm. Panasonic or black magic. That's just a little more usable. Am yeah. I wrong? 
Mm. You know, full frame 6K, S1H. Right. Uh, the smaller stuff, Pocket 6K, 4K with mm. ProRes RAW. I mean, I just feel like they're, they're tr- I love the idea, but I just feel like it's just slightly not, if everything was like $1,000 cheaper in their lineup. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, we know, I, I have a feeling I Infinity is hurting really hard because yeah. they're just, yes. Zcam is getting it so much more right than, than they are. Uh, and then, and then what's going to happen with Panasonic when we start to talk about digital cinema cameras, that Eva one is long in the tooth. Very Are we going to see an Eva two soon? I mean, Eva two would be great. Uh, new menu system, actual was, screen that you can use. It was ready for an update the day after it was launched. That thing. <laughs> well, so was the AF one hundred, but that's not a right. conversation for this particular episode. <laughs> I, but, I think I think Panasonic should. Uh, well, that might be complicating the line, but like, uh, I think the EVA uh, should would be like your FS five. And yep. then they should come up with a version that's more FS seven E. Yes. That makes sense. Oh, I agree. I mean, because there's there's still a gap, but they tried to do that with the um come on, what's the next Vericam. camera up? The Vericam yeah, the, the LT. Vericam. Because yeah. they did that the they did that at under ten. But I think they kind of need to do like Eva two is in the five to six range, and then they move up and they're in the eight to nine range for whatever that other camera is. You know, because mm. LT just doesn't register with the people who are in the. I don't know why it doesn't seem to register in the same space as no, the C two hundred camera. of the world. Yeah, oh, great camera. Mm. Yeah, so it would be interesting to see where they go. And you know, they're killing it right now in the mirrorless world, no mm. question. And Caleb, you have you know said many times that from a from an app and sort of connectivity and control standpoint that. Does anybody do it better than Panasonic right now in the mirrorless space in terms of feature set? No, it's Panasonic, Canon, everybody else. No, but Panasonic's but I'm ta- a way yeah, ahead of no, everyone. No, no, but I'm talking about Panasonic. I'm talking about you've got scopes and all of the tools and just the app-based control. I mean, Canon yeah. is not even close when it comes to that stuff. I mean, they're no. just they're basically Wi-Fi, browser-based IP address, you know, latency, laden. Uh, control and then Panasonic's killing it when it comes to yeah, the app. It's very I mean, good. If That's Fuji, one, not so much, but close. But the GH5, GH5S, GH4. Yeah, that stuff's, you don't even need a monitor. It's ridiculous. Right. Super I mean, low latency. Can you imagine if Fujifilm had that kind of control over their cameras with uh, w- in the same way that the GH4, GH5, GH5S has? I mean, that would just sort of take that whole ecosystem to another level as well i think yeah mm. well, well this conversation pivoted pretty quickly <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> my goodness uh, yeah people are talking about panasonic um dying on hills with the autofocus everyone's <laughs> uh <laughs> reacting <laughs> not positively to my my z cam talk speak speaking of af i read something about the komodo yeah having I had a conversation with somebody about that yesterday. Yeah, I don't think it's going to... It's going to be... Yeah. Yeah. It's it's phase detection. It's going to be okay. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Love Bill's comment, something I've mentioned in the past. I would love 32-bit float audio coming into camera systems, Mm, which would be great. Beautiful. Not going to happen. It would be hot. It would be really, really hot. Who's going to be first to implement that? Which manufacturers? Definitely Panasonic or Sony, Sony. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you know what I'd love to do? I would love to see a sound devices badge on the side of a camera system. Let's just oh, get yeah. it. like, come on. It's like <laughs> just above all, the two XLR ports. Exactly. On the handle. Yeah. And it just says audio by, and then it just has a little sound devices logo. It doesn't even have to say sound devices, just that little logo right there. And there's a little cross thing going on between the camera company and sound devices. It, I, I think <laughs> it's time for that kind of thing to happen. And yeah. I love well, what sound devices, huh? Or just a little black sticker, just like the Intel ones on laptops, like powered by. No, that's what I'm devices. talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just their little logo. No, you don't see the name of the company. And then, yeah, I think that would be that would be huge. Hot. Um, yeah, let's I mean, I, let's do it. Come on. Yeah. 
Good times. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we've hit six o'clock here in Chicago, uh, four o'clock over in Gems Universe, and midnight one one, one a.m. Oi, oi, oi. In one a.m. on Thursday morning, yeah. Purple rain. All right. Purple rain. Look at yeah. him. <laughs> Sing it. Time to take off the trainers. Um, and I'm to take note, off the trainers and get horizontal. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to wrap this this show up, boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a good one. Enjoy the chat here. We're going to try to, uh, you know, as we go forward, spend more time in the chat because that's always a good time. You never know where it's going to go. Like it turned into... Z cam slash camera land at the end there, which is always fun. So if you haven't already subscribe, cause we're going to be here next week. You don't want to miss it. I don't know who's hosting one of these two ben. gentlemen down here. Ben. Me, I think yeah. Ben is all right. Uh, and on that note, um, keep your whiskey neat and, uh, we'll see you guys next time or not or on rocks i'm not gonna judge jim no any no, final no. words ben but yeah keep your whiskey neat and i love that and uh you know just watch out for the 220 don't like that tickle it's not fun <laughs> <laughs> watch, okay. watch, and, and just make sure you watch your left hand when you're gardening yeah easy on the know. hoe yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Love you all. Have a good night. Love you too. I'll see you next yeah. week. <laughs> Amazing. Let's Bye push guys. the logo at this point. Pushing the logo. Oh boy. Here we go.